we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Good morning, and welcome to our virtual <coughs> service once again. Uh, just to explain what's going on, uh, given I don't think I really need to explain, but given the circumstances in our neighboring communities and our surrounding areas that are struggling with COVID, uh, and out of respect for our own parish, where half of our people <coughs> in areas such as Glenwood and Appleton and other places like that are struggling with this at the time, uh, the bishop has asked all of the parishes in this area, like our deanery, Twillingate, and a few other places as well, to conduct a virtual service this week as a sort of circuit breaker to try and help uh, encourage the down, coming down in the numbers uh, that are growing at this time. So, we hope that you'll be able to join us this morning, and as I've already made note, I hope everybody is sharing this video out there or sharing the information that we're doing in this way once again. This may be a temporary measure, we hope it is, but at the same time, until such time uh, that we know things are improving, this is the way things are going to be for a little while again. And as I've said to Reverend Owen and a few other people who've asked, if we have to forfeit Thanksgiving to keep Christmas, I'd be willing to do it. So. Keep everyone in your prayers who are struggling at this time in their communities, and we'll carry on with our worship for this morning. We're going to have our opening hymn now. Uh, <clears throat> all of the hymns that are being played or sung this morning have been pre-recorded at other times. As a matter of fact, some of them have been taken from another time entirely. It might be a summer, it might be last fall, but that's what we're doing this morning. So we're going to start with our opening hymn. Found on page 45 of your BAS. 
<clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins together, that we may can obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. We say together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O oh, come, let us worship. And we say responsibly, the, the Nidee. It's found on page 49 of the B.A.S. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shed for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Now we have the proclamation of the word. Our first reading is taken from the book of Job. There once was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. The man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from all evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord, oh, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you have incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. And then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin. All that people have, they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well. He's in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a pot shirt with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. And then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin once with his lips. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is number 26. It's found on page 734 in our BAS. Page 734, Psalm 26. And we're going to read it by the verse responsibly. 
Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers, and I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in possession, procession around your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood. Whose hands are full of evil plots, and their right hand full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. We say together, God of love and mercy, give us clean hands and pure hearts, that we may walk in innocence and come to your eternal dwelling to praise you in the company of your saints forever. Let no one separate. 
Then in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, and if she divorces her husband and marries another, she also commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know, right? Not exactly the sign we were hoping for, not exactly the sign we were looking for, but it's the sign we're stuck with. And I didn't enjoy putting it up either. But with that said, it's necessary. And unfortunately, even necessary evils have their purpose. And I know a lot of you are out there saying, well, how come? Because, I mean, in some necks of the woods around here, even though next-door neighbors to us, communities nearby are all struggling with the rise in numbers of COVID cases and everything else, how come us? We don't got any. Don't forget, it wasn't very long ago that we did, and we were the ones in the hub of it all, in the center, in the bullseye. But, nevertheless, I'm getting ahead of myself. My point is only that, yeah, this sucks. It stinks. It's not what we wanted. It's especially not what we expected. Though, let's face it, it was pretty much inevitable that we were going to have to deal with a little bit of online content again soon. But, you know, we can't just sit here in the muck and say, oh, why me, oh, woe is me. I mean, even in a worse scenario than ours, uh, there, and there are worse, there are some people out there who somehow, some way, find blessings, find up to the downs. Because that's the thing, we're trying to get everything down now, and in the process, we're getting down ourselves. I mean, here we are trying to bring numbers down of cases and situations down, calm down and everything else. But in the midst of all that, we get down. I gotta tell you right now, the weather the past week has been so dreary that it hasn't really helped my mood whatsoever. But even so, can we truly recognize what is good, what is prosperous, and what is blessing without the things going wrong first? Do we really take things for, gr things for granted? Maybe we do. But we can hardly just sit in the muck and do nothing. Take, in the case of our readings this week. In our readings this week, we have two big ones. We have, uh, from Hebrews, a letter concerning the ups and downs of mortal life. And from Job, yes, that Job, uh, we hear about what it's like to really have a hard time and how you deal with it. Because you know what? How hard your time is, if you'll pardon the academic jargon as I said it just then, but how hard you make your time often comes from how you react to how hard it is, not just how hard the time is itself. The problems we encounter are only made problematic, or even more problematic, by how we respond, not how we react. So, with that in mind, let's look at the case study of Job briefly, because we're only at the start. Oh, don't get me wrong, I could dig into Job real with two teeth and two hands and just roar right into it. But right now, we're only at the beginning, so you find out where it all started. And in this case, it started, unfortunately, with almost a bet. It, it sounds like a bet, doesn't it? But anyway, you have the heavenly creatures up there, all of them. You have God up there, you have the angels in the outfields and everything else. And then the fallen one shows up. Yeah, him. So him shows up, he who shall not be named, and, well, Satan, I will name him Satan. Anyway, he was there, and he shows up and says, uh, he basically goads God into testing one of his own people. Now, even though God offers him up freely, right in the line right there, have you considered my servant Jacob? You know, in the Satan's little to and fro as he was talking about. Have you considered, not Jacob, I'm sorry, have you considered my servant Job? Jeepers. Anyway, a lot of J names in the Bible, give me a break. But have you considered Job? There's no one like him on earth, God says, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He persists. So that's pretty big. You know, he chooses constantly. He persists in his integrity, though you would have incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. 
That's what Satan was trying to goad God into doing. So Satan answers, huh, all people have, all that people have, they will give to save their lives. You push somebody far enough and see how quickly the things they have matter. How quickly they will eschew everything, integrity or anything else. How much, how quickly they'll give all that up just to be let go, just to be set free, just to be without pain. And God turns and says, all right, show me. And he gives Satan the opportunity to basically wreck everything to do with Job. Now, this is only the start. At the start, he's just covered in sores and boils and stuff. And even then, you know, infections. Yeah, we don't know anything about that. But he quarantines himself. <laughs> Instead of just sitting there and complaining, he literally, in a religious fashion, goes and sits in the ashes with a pot sure to scratch himself with and stays there. Despite the fact his own wife is saying, oh, just give in. Give in. Your suffering is not is, is too great. Just give in and die. Tell God you're, you're mad at him and just die. Now, you ever notice that we don't try, I don't think, to blame God in an emergency? We turn to him usually. And Job does exactly that. And he takes it a step further, something I appreciate. In the midst of his emergency, instead of bellyaching like a lot of us are being, and listen, I understand, there's a lot of reason to bellyache. There's a lot of reason to stay in those ashes with your pot shirt, scratch and complain about the government and how they're responding to things or the churches and how they're doing whatever they're doing or whatever the stores closing, mask necessity, the um, those passports we got to deal with now and everything else and vaccines, this and blah, blah, blah. You see a lot of it on the news where everybody's just complaining. And yet here you have Job right in the thick of it. And he turns around and says, could be worse. <laughs> and more importantly, and I'm going to quote this properly, he not only calls his wife foolish, which is, well, but more importantly than that, he says, shall we receive good at the hand of God and not receive bad? How are you going to recognize what is good without the bad? How can you truly celebrate what is blessed without first also understanding what it is to have no blessing? That's kind of where Job is right now, and that's kind of where a lot of people feel they are right now. And let me tell you something. It's unfortunate. It's inconvenient. It's annoying. It's difficult. It's a lot of different things, but I don't know if we're suffering yet. Not really. So There are so those who are sick who are suffering. Oh, yes. But the little inconveniences of, oh, I forgot my mask, or, oh, I got to show a little piece of paper to get on a boat and stuff like that. Mm, I don't know. Because you know who else suffered and was the example for us? Not just Job, but let me get, listen, I'll tell you about more about Job as we go along. But Job, honestly, is reason enough. And Job's story is only a parable, really. If there was a real person named Job or not, is irrelevant. The point of fact is that this book was written to teach the lesson of not just having faith in God, but listen to how God spoke of Job in the beginning. God had faith in him. He turned Job's life over to Satan in the confidence that Job would succeed, that Job would overcome, that Job would have faith, confidence, and blessing because he knew God was with him. How often do we forget in the midst of all these trials and tribulations that God is still with us? Let me tell you something else, not just with us in the sense of, oh, I don't need medicine, oh, I don't need a vaccine, oh, I don't need all these things, I'll just depend on God. God has given you all those wonderful things so that we don't have to depend on him for the heavenly places he keeps for us. He wants us around a little longer, I would like to think, or else he wouldn't have given us all these wonderful ways of healing ourselves. I mean, for heaven's sake, there's that old joke about a fella on, on his doorstep watching the floodwaters rise. Somebody comes by in their car and says, come on, we'll get you to the shelter. He's like, nah, I'm fine. God will protect me. A little hours later, he's on the second floor of his house and the waters are up to there. And somebody comes by in a boat and he says, listen, I got my boat. I'll take you to safety. And he's like, no, God will protect me. And the next thing you know, the waters are up as far as his rooftop and he's up on the roof and a helicopter comes by. And a helicopter does something. And he says, basically, here, we'll help you out. We'll get you to safety. No, God will provide. God will be with me. And then next thing you know, he's dead. He's on the heavenly gates. And what does he do? He says, God, where were you? He said, well, I didn't know what else to do. I sent your neighbors. I sent the guy in the boat. I sent the helicopter. What else did you want? I did everything I could to protect you. And I'm going to take that a step further. God doesn't just have confidence in us because we're faithful. He has confidence in us because he knows what true suffering is. God is fully aware of what suffering truly could be. And more important than that, the other side of it, how large 
salvation is in light of it because of his son. Anybody who says that Jesus uh, has given us reasons not to follow through with protecting our neighbor, saving our loved ones, uh, keeping people safe through medicine, through vaccine, through anything else, obviously hasn't heard that he went to the cross and suffered for us first. He knows what suffering is, and he went to that cross so we wouldn't have to suffer, so that we would understand that we do not need to. And he went to there so that he would be able to basically know truly what the huge blessing of salvation truly could be. He suffered the most so that he could experience and give the greatest blessing back. The letter to the Hebrews talks about some of this. It talks about how humankind is just a few steps below the angels, loved by God, like a treasured child, like a, well, and that's exactly the best terminology for it. I won't say a pet. Pet's not right. A child. And to be treasured that much, he wants to do whatever he can to be with us, to help us. And in the midst of all that, it says that we are, that Jesus in the midst of all that is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being sustaining everyone by the power of his word and that we human beings you know faulty as we are uh, we're still mortal and yet God loves us so much and uh, we are just a little bit lower than angels but we are crowned with glory and honor so we're not perfect but we're loved we're cared for just as much as God cared and had faith in Job so in the midst of all this Hebrews goes on to say then Jesus who was for a little while also made human also made a little lower than the angels uh, just like us, and crowned with the same glory and, you know, finiteness as us mortals, he suffered and died so that the, by the grace of God, he would know what the taste of death was. And more importantly, by give, knowing the taste of death, to bring and to give us the blessing of life. And then it goes on from there to basically say that he is the pioneer of salvation through suffering. Suffering in this life, suffering is what brought salvation into this world. Without suffering, without Jesus on that cross, without him knowing what pain and death was, salvation for us would not exist. Not really. Not the way we know it in our faith. And with all that in mind, it takes it to that thing that Job said. Are we only to know the good or must we know the bad too? This is a difficult time, a headache again, an annoyance, an inconvenience. Suffering it's not. And more importantly, the true test of our faith is not to refuse, rebuke, or rebuttal all those who are uh, making it harder or to do all those other things, but quite frankly, is to recognize God is still with us even in this troublesome time. Even in the headaches and even in the true disasters for some people who are sick, we have to give thanks for the fact that God still walks with us, that his son stepped before us to know exactly what it is we're going through, and he walks alongside of us too to try and bring us the comfort and strength that we need. But on top of all those things, that God has enough confidence in his faithful people to know that we would not turn away from him in our time of dire need. Instead, we would look to him for help. And more importantly, to follow his example. For Christ wants us to follow his example and to give and to allow so that no others would suffer that we would suffer a little inconvenience so that no one else has to, that we would suffer a little bit unto ourselves, just as he has asked us to, to pick up our cross and follow him as the example, so that others may experience the blessing and salvation that can be found. I've gone on a bit here, but my point is still the same, if you can catch what I'm picking up. What we're going through right now is a nuisance, yes. An inconvenience, yes. But it's necessary. And truly, we will be better because of it. On the other side of this, things will be better. So hopefully this little stopgap that we have right now will become a blessing in turn. And hopefully for all of us and all of you, even though it may seem inconvenient, we have things at the ready. We can still worship. We can still sing. And we can still give thanks that God is still with us. In this time of hardship and difficulty, don't forget, he looks to you and says, Have you considered my servant? There are none like them. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We usually have our offertory hymn now at this time, and with that in mind, I want to let everybody know, uh, we will be making an offertory uh, drop-off time later this week. I'm going to consult with the uh, bishop just to make sure what, time, uh, what day would be best, given what we're doing right now. Uh, but with all that in mind, we're going to make a day later this week for drop-off. And uh, don't forget as well that if you do not feel comfortable uh, dropping it off, you can also uh, save it till the next time we gather, if that's what you'd like to do. Or you can also e-transfer, and all the information for that will be attached to our video this week. So uh, there are many ways that we can continue to uphold and uh, make sure that we support the worship and the work and ministry of our church, even when we're separate. And the prayer over our gifts, not just what we offer with our lives, but even in our hearts and prayers, we say together, God of truth, receive all we offer you this day. Make us worthy servants, strong to follow in the pattern of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Find 
find strength, comfort, and support from their Christian community. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And may those who have died rest in the presence of God, sharing in his eternal banquet. We pause now to remember them and any who mourn. Pray for George, Linda, and Susan. Mm -hmm. And we remember, you know, even those who have gone um, before us, you know, our grandparents or our parents and all loved ones. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And we say together, Gracious and merciful, merciful God, God, your faithfulness is timeless. Grant that our lives might reflect that same faithfulness which Jesus, your Son, shared with us, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now we say together the comment for today. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by your teaching that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we share together the fellowship grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. So once again, God bless everyone, and thank you for being a part of our worship this week. A couple little announcements just before we go. Uh, a reminder, hopefully, now as October is upon us, that we will be having our cold plate uh, takeout. Uh, I will keep my ear to the ground as to the rules and regulations, should anything change on the government side. But as of right now, uh, things are still going ahead. We have a flood of tickets out there, but only 200 plates uh, available to sell. So if you're looking for a ticket for that fundraiser, which is going to help uh, to the funding of our roof repair, our reshingling and all that, uh, then I would ask that you contact one of our vestry members or the office, or myself or Reverend Owen. We know people got tickets. Do you got any that? No. No? Oh, he got his also. <laughs> well, no, I got it. No, I didn't have any. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I still got some of them, so yes. And, uh, but I, I will get them if someone calls. Oh, then yes, he knows where to get them, that's right. If someone calls from no one, he knows who got them. We got a list. So yes, if you're looking for tickets, you can call either of us, the office, or one of our vestry members, and we'll be sure to get them to you. It's $10 a plate, and it's going to be a good meal out, I promise. Uh, on top of that is what we have other events and things that we will be posting as they come, but as of right now, they're in the wings, you know, we're just trying to make sure things are alright, but that's the most closest one coming up. Uh, meetings and such, we're also going to be checking in too. I know we have ACW meetings, BAC meetings, and other things for the month of October, so we'll be keeping you in touch as to whether or not they'll be going ahead based on uh, levels changing and COVID cases and numbers and such like that. As well, our confirmation class, we had a wonderful little startup uh, the other evening. We have about six students, give or take, including, on top of that, two adults, which is lovely. Uh, they, separate classes. Uh, but if you do know somebody who may not have gotten the memo or gotten the information, I'm happy to share it with them. The starting point is grade six, 11 years old and up. So that means anyone after that too, junior high, senior high, if you are interested to be confirmed, you are welcome in this class. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, there, uh, we will begin, we hope to begin in our classes, I believe on the second Wednesday of October. So I think that's the 13th. 
So I'll keep you posted. Check on the St. Paul's Youth page, or if you're not a part of that, I'll also make the announcements on our Facebook page as well. With all that in mind, uh, I don't know if you know anybody, birthday, anniversary, or anything like that. No. It's a bit early for the ones I got, and hopefully we'll be back in church by the time I announce those, so I'm not going to say any of mine yet. Uh, but there's lots of things in our family for this month, but you can't think of me on top of your head. Well, if we missed your birthday this week, we apologize, but at the same time, we're keeping you in our prayers, and at the same time, uh, if somebody lets us know, we'll gladly add it to the uh, message that we put with the uh, video link that we put up tomorrow. With all that in mind, folks, God bless you. Stay safe and pray safe, which is something I always say. And hopefully this buffer time now will uh, interrupt any further problems with uh, COVID cases increasing. But be mindful. Keep, it, uh, keep an eye on each other and pray for each other to keep us all safe. We have one more hymn that we're going to share with you now. And uh, on the end of our video, of course, the Southern Blessing always plays. So God bless you, and we will hopefully see you next week.